Hi, I'm Charlie DeMarco with the Pinecrest Gall Research Station. And this will be the first in a series of videos on plant galls done in cooperation with the Natural History Institute here in Prescott, Arizona. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoy it. So what are galls exactly? They are abnormal growths on a plant which it would never produce on its own without some outside influence. Galls uh, can occur on leaves, twigs, roots, or flowers for many plants. And most galls are caused by irritation and or stimulation of plant cells due to the feeding or egg laying by insects, such as aphids, midges, wasps, or mites. So perhaps the best way to start talking about galls is to take a cycle of the life cycle of a gall wasp. This is a generalized explanation. There's many different possible inducers of galls and many different plants that can be induced. But we'll just be talking about one specific um, instance and we'll start with the gall wasp. So imagine you're up on Thumb Butte walking around and in the air you see a very small wasp flying around. The wasp has been alive only a week or two since it has emerged from the gall that it grew in. And in that time she has mated and she's looking for a place to put her eggs. It can't be just anywhere. It has to be a very specific plant. The larvae will be controlling the chemical process of this plant and every plant is different. So it has to be a very specific plant that they are uh, able to recognize and be able to control the chemical process of that plant. So as she flies, she checks different trees and she's looking for a white oak tree in this case and she tries various trees but the tree has to be in a very specific state not only a specific tree but the tree must be in a very specific state of intense growth in the spring where many chemicals uh, and nutrients and especially hormones are being brought up to the area where she may place her eggs so when she finds this one place and finds this one leaf that she's going to place her eggs in, she will take out her ovipositor, which is kind of like a drill and a pipe at the same time. And she will drill just slightly under the surface of the leaf and through that pipe, drop her eggs down into the leaf surface. So now the uh, eggs are below the surface and they're getting ready to hatch into larvae. The uh, process of putting the eggs there uh, also included a drop of what's called ovipositional fluid. It's a drop of fluid uh, brought in by the female wasp. Uh, and so just below the surface are the um, eggs and the fluid. And what the plant experiences is there's been damage, there's been a break in the surface of its leaf and it begins to send nutrients and water and especially hormones to that area for repair. So this is kind of the magical natural history moment right now that's happening. The plant is sending nutrients and hormones to that area, the eggs are hatching, the ovipositional fluid is there, and as the nutrients arrive the larvae and the ovipositional fluid begins to take control of that chemical process and instead of the repair being made on the leaf or instead of any new growth being grown, the plant begins to build what the larvae wanted to build, which is a gall, which is a home for the larvae to live in and be fed as long as they're there. And it's not only a home. The Larvae will control the actions of the plant to where the uh, plant actually produces vascularization and it will be delivering food, nutrients, water to the larvae so they can grow and um, mature. It's an amazing and intricate process that's been going on for over 300 
million years. So that's it for episode one. Thanks for coming along. I think we've seen the really interesting and kind of unusual aspect of a parasite, of which the gall wasp is definitely a parasite. It's getting something out of the process and the tree is getting nothing out of it. But on the other hand, the tree doesn't suffer very much either. Uh, trees or other plants that are attacked by galls um, never or almost never are harmed significantly. And we also see that it's such an unusual process by which a parasite comes along and basically takes over the process of another living thing, the tree. The tree is trying to do its own thing and grow the, the way it wants to grow, but the insect has another idea and forces it, uh, coerces it to do what it wants to do. Very unusual parasitic relationship. So again, end of episode one, there's a lot more to know about galls. Thanks for coming along and I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye. I wanted to say a few words about the Pinecrest Gall Research Station. It's a citizen science project that we've been working with for about seven years. The goal of which is to identify, classify, photograph, and document as many different unique galls as we can in the Prescott area. If you want any more information about our project, you can take a shallow and fun dive into it by looking at our Facebook page shown here on the screen. And if you want a serious and more complete documentation of all our work, you can go to our webpage.